Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 309, The American Sugar Conspiracy That Is Killing Us. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We recently found an article in Huffington Post that broke the news that a lot of what is considered to be scientific research, which is a label that people historically have respected Mm -hmm. and accepted. Oh, if it's scientific research, it it must at least be honest. Or true. Or true. (laughs) Fact versus opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what we discovered in this article, what Huffington Post discovered and what uh, JAMA also put uh, a a report about this uh, on, on their website, is that sugar manufacturers have been working in collusion to hire and fund a scientist to do research that proves predetermined points. So they know going in <laughs> what the outcome is going to be mm-hmm. because they're getting paid to slant it. Right. And they've been providing this information then, and this is one of the reasons we want to talk about it, because it's, a, it's in and of itself, it's dishonest, hypocritical. It's a lie uh, that goes under the guise of scientific research, and we're concerned about that. But a secondary concern that we have is that then government policymakers take this data that they, we have to assume, are not in on the fix. They're not in on the deal. We're not saying they're corrupt and lying, but they've been presented with these results that cause them then to skew recommendations on the food plate uh, or the food pyramid so that we eat more of certain foods. Uh, other policymakers that are not involved directly with telling us what to eat and how. Uh, but are involved with things like uh, maintaining the agricultural production base in the United States at a certain level. We don't want the family farmers to go out of business. We don't want mm-hmm. agribusiness to go out of business. And so there's always a question about crop production versus crop sales and price supports and regulations so that the consumer always has access to a sufficient amount of product at a reasonable price. And the producers always <coughs> have the ability to sell their product at a reasonable price. So there's government policy that's involved in setting all those regulations. And when one significant component of it is dishonest and unethically manipulated, it causes the whole system to skew. Mm -hmm. And the net results that we want to talk about today, especially about sugar and corn production and agricultural policy for corn production and price supports and so on, is that we now have an epidemic of diabetes and obesity in this country and people are dying as a result of being trained and addicted through sugar addictions to eat the wrong foods in the wrong amounts. And that message has been broadcast and encouraged and supported by our government and and by our schools because the schools trust the government. The government says, hey, here's the food pyramid. Teach these little kids this is what they're supposed to eat. And serve them this. Yeah, and serve them this. Mm -hmm. It's put on the diet. And so what's happened is that so many foods now as an essential ingredient have corn syrup. I mean, I I don't know if you ever eat pancakes and have maple syrup, Mm -hmm. but the maple syrup that you buy, unless it specifically says on the label that it comes from maple trees, it's all corn syrup. There's no maple anywhere near it. The the issue for me yeah. out of all of this, besides the fact that people we trust and the and the government who is basically paid by us when we pay our taxes, right. and we pay them to tell us basically what is safe, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, is not looking at our health at all. They're looking at how much they can sell of sugar and corn. Right. And the way that came about, right. if, if you think about how, how it came about when, when World War II ended, right. so that's even before I was born, then that caused, we became the producers of the food for Europe and we, for ourselves. We maintained wartime levels of rationing for months after the end of World War II because the devastation in Europe had mm-hmm. displaced millions of people 
There, the crop production was did not happen during the latter years of the war. There were people starving. And so our government came up with the Marshall Plan. We're going to take uh, product and send it over there mm -hmm. for them to be able to have and to eat. And so our consumers had to stand in line and wait mm -hmm. after the war was over for all kinds of things, not just a new car, a new home, a new watch, but also for foods mm -hmm. that had been scarce and rare. And as bad as that might be for us, we weren't starving. Exactly. They were starving. Exactly. So, so it was, again, it makes sense. It was a plan to feed the world, right? So, so we kicked up production. We gave farmers right. Incentives benefits and incentives and to make guaranteed prices. If staples. You're not going to have a, a uh, you're not going to be able to grow fifty thousand bushels of corn and not be able to sell it on the market and have to destroy it. Right. So, so there was a, I think, a really good reason to begin with. Just like everything else that turns out not so good, that was the reason. So when we continue, started to do this, certain people benefited on the production end, and those are people producing. We had a lot of sugar. We had a lot of. Um, parts of the U.S. that made sugar cane or grew sugar cane and also corn that makes corn syrup. So so we were making grains. We were, excuse me, we were growing grains and sending them overseas and we were consuming them. But then when Europe became self-sufficient, we ended up with all of these people who were on the on the bandwagon, kind of getting money from the government to produce uh, sugar and corn, and they they wanted to stay on it. So they were pitching the government, saying we need to we need to keep our production up because, well, that because had to be backed up with something. Right. So they started doing studies, and the studies basically said just what you were telling us that we needed to eat more carbohydrates because carbohydrates is what America makes. So it was a it was really a um, monetary reason, not a health reason. Right. But they made it into a health reason, right. and then we all learned the food pyramid. It's an easier sell. It is. I mean, they they taught our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers for some of us listening that you should eat all these grains, cereal every morning, and you should have all this bread and you should have all this pasta because that's what we made here in the United States. So. We started feeding our children those foods, and those are the foods we ate. And, and we ate at school all kinds of carbohydrates. And they compounded it in the 50s and 60s. They said, you got to eat all these grains. You need, like, cereal is a healthy thing. Let's eat it, which mm -hmm. is carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. But then they started making fortified cereals, fortified with mm -hmm. sugar. Right. So then you have Frosted Flakes and Captain Crunch and all these sugary uh, cereals that, because of the sugar, our taste buds want. Mm -hmm. And that increases our dependency and our level of addiction to sugar consumption. So, so and it sells a lot more cereal. It, it sells a lot more. So there's a lot of foods that because they want to sell more, they put sugar in it because then you crave it. It becomes an addiction. So in all of our in all of our drug policies, we're trying to stop addiction, but not when it comes to sugar and carbohydrates that we produce in this country. So up until up until approximately five years ago. We had this pyramid that I knew through taking care of patients and right. through the physiology of how food gives you energy and how food makes you dependent on certain things. I knew that a low fat diet doesn't work. They had said, you need grains, so therefore you need a low fat diet and a high carb diet. Well, all my patients that did that got fat. Right. People who who went to um, vegetarianism but didn't eat pure food, just ate cereals and things like that, just oh, yeah. gained tons I'm, of weight. I'm a vegetarian. I'm eating healthy. And because I'm not eating meat now, I can eat more pie and more Twinkies right, and I'm more not donuts because eat, yeah, I'm, I'm not eating that horrible I'm not meat. eating all that fat. Yeah. So, so it turns out that all of this information that we were fed and we believed and we thought was right, although I had my questions because of how my patients responded to it. Um, not, not because you're a cynic. But because you well, because food. I'm a cynic, and because my and and I never could eat a high carb diet. It made me sick. Right. It just wasn't good for me, and it made me gain weight. So I went. That can't possibly be true for everyone. So well, it's not true for most of us, and it has caused us to have a very high rate of diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. It's not fat that you in you take in that makes you have heart disease. It is carbohydrates, and they are just now coming out with that. That is something that. Journal of the AMA has put on the front page, not that everyone who's a doctor is going to believe it, right. 
But since I've... Well, because we've been indoctrinated for over 50 years. Yeah, we've years, been brainwashed. The social policy planners <laughs> have fomented this uh, concept of the food pyramid, that you need to eat this. And we were all taught this in school, and we all have internalized it and believe it. Mm-hmm. And now we find it's just as deadly to so many of us as the message that many of us learned as children when we had to belong to the Clean Your Plate Club. Right. You know, you have to eat everything that's put on your plate. Your mother worked hard to fix this meal for you. You're not an appreciative child. If you don't eat this meal, you need to eat this food. Somebody's starving somewhere, so you better eat yeah, your food. Starving children in China. Oh, yeah, name two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so within the last three years, the government has finally said we were wrong. And the food pyramid <laughs> isn't the way that we need to be looking at food consumption. And we need to consider other factors. And so they got researchers at Harvard University to come up with a new program to try to sell and institutionalize in our schools, our educational programs from kindergarten on that they're now calling the Harvard food plate. And they're moving the things around. They're not stacking them on top of each other. And they're showing volume amounts that you need to be considering reduced size consumption, portion consumption. But don't get real comfortable with the government dictations because. But now JAMA and uh, Huffington Post have come out with these articles that saying even in the process of revising what their fundamental message to us is about food consumption, they've been hornswoggled. If you will, we've we've been hornswoggled. By, all of the Americans we have who all believe Americans that, and maybe even the government. I mean, and again, I'm not as readily willing to assert I am. that the government is venal and corrupt in this process. It may be the data was given to them by the Harvard doctors, and they ignored it. Well, they, they found other reasons to <laughs> emphasize something else instead. Uh, you just don't want somebody coming in and, and and taking you off to. Some the black helicopters. Yes, the black coming. helicopters showing up. <laughs> I, no, I don't. I don't believe in that level of conspiracy. I really don't. But but I am concerned because what what the data is now showing is that the producers of the sugar and of the messages about diet and food consumption skewed deliberately, intentionally, and and with premeditation the scientific research that they were buying. You know, I'm upset, too, with university researchers because they sold out. And and so then that makes me wonder when... Uh, about med- any research. Well, about any research. You know, when doctors sign off on research about some drug, are they getting big profit payouts well, from the drug companies? Are they getting mm-hmm. an encouragement to say... So it makes me suspicious... That's in the fine print. ...of everybody. Yeah, well, if it's mm-hmm. available at all. Mm-hmm. But, but if they are getting paid for it, then, dang it, it's wrong. It is wrong. And, it is and wrong. So and there's a lot of that because just say you have to submit for grants, submit yeah. all this information for grants. And so the government decides who they're going to give the money to or organizations or in- industry is going to Industries. decide. Industry trade groups funding research to prove specific points. So it's they take whatever you say, I want to prove this. Yeah. They look at that and they go, well, that works. It fixes our budget. It helps us sell more. So, okay, we're going to take those. These? Nope, we're not going to even look at it. So they, they quit funding them. When, when the results results start to come in and the data is starting to stack up in opposition to what they wanted to prove, then they cancel the study. Right. So or they, they don't they, ever give them money to do the study. One or the other. To begin with. So, so the only ones that reach a conclusion reach a predetermined... Not, uh, we see this. Remember we saw that with the WHI study? Yeah. Everything they wanted to show that estrogen didn't right. help women. Right. And in turn, they the real results showed that estrogen didn't hurt us and it in many ways helped us, but they didn't publish that part. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we've been finding more and more looking at that data that it actually helps us. So, but, but that's not what they released to us in the public. Right. And, and so then as you get this information, you have to look for the pattern. And mm-hmm. one of the patterns that has to be examined is the pattern of government regulation. When, and, and it's really complex because there are so many overlapping industries. There's the farm industry and the food production industry. Then there's the canning and pre-preparation mm-hmm. packaged food industry. Mm-hmm. Then there's the sales industry. Everybody takes a piece grocery and makes stores. money. I mean, grocery stores, marketing, advertising, you know, cereal commercials, mm-hmm. candy commercials, what have you. And we sit back and are inundated. We, we live in a market-driven economy, mm-hmm. so we're inundated by these messages that say, uh, I mean, and, and a lot of times they deliberately 
if you study advertising, if you study propaganda, some guy <laughs> comes out in a doctor coat. <laughs> and he doesn't say he's a doctor, but he's standing in front of a, doc, a bunch of medical books and maybe a uh, And he looks better than 99.9% of the doctors. Yeah. And he says, uh, uh, hey, guys, you need to be taking X-Lax uh, once a week. We take, and, and, and all of the medical ads where they say, take this product, you know, butterflies fly across the scene and people are sleeping <laughs> and there's nice music playing. And they don't That's even tell you what the medicine's for. Right. They just say, go ask your doctor for this medicine or go buy this medicine if it's over the counter. And butterflies will fly through your bedroom and music will play and you'll be able to sleep comfortably and your husband will love you and you'll be beautiful. Good luck. Well, millions and millions of dollars are spent on those sales pitches and they work because people go buy mm -hmm. that crap. Or if they can, but doctors also prescribe it because they're exhausted by people saying, I want this, I want this, I, I want this. somebody tell me this weekend that they are really excited because they've started taking stem cells as a way to reduce taking them, reduce their pain and because they're in a lot of pain. But stem so cells, said, how? Exactly what I said. So they brought me a package of powder <laughs> that they had bought over the internet for $50. And they put this powder, uh, which has a really nasty taste, according to them, yeah. and in a 16 ounces of water, and they drink this. And it's supposed to help. And they and now they're ordinary people with ordinary educations. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying, so I'm taking stem cells, and it's going to help me. It's going to make my body strong. It's going to make my joints work. It's going to make me not have pain. So I looked up this stuff online, mm -hmm. and I'm reading to them. There are only five ingredients. None of them have been proven in any way to help reduce pain or make joints stronger. None of them have. Uh, their proprietary ingredients are mm -hmm. fancy names like shell with platformate. <laughs> Nobody knows what that is. Uh, and it basically says it hasn't been proven to help. It hasn't been proven not to help. So psychologically, you may benefit from taking Were this Were there any magical... stem cells in there? No. No. So, see? So <laughs> what, uh, what it claims is that if you take this supplement, this additive, mm -hmm. it will cause your body to rejuvenate its own production of its own stem cells. And there's no, according to what I read on the web, there's no scientific proof of this. It's just a claim. Mm -hmm. So people desire that kind of certainty, that kind of help, and they're susceptible to that kind of marketing. And mm -hmm. it's doubly deadly when it has to do with food consumption and sugar in our diets because of diabetes, because of obesity, because of strokes and heart attacks. I'm more concerned really about the government telling us things that we're supposed to do that is supposed to be healthy and they're supposed to be protecting us. And they they are using propaganda to sell something to other countries or to sell something within our country. That bothers me much more than the individual looking at something, not being able to figure out whether it's good for them or not. As long as it's not harmful, they waste their money. They... Uh, a lot of people waste their money on supplements every day. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not going to hurt them. Or but multivitamins. In, My doctor says it's a multivitamin is just a really expensive form of urine. Yeah, well, I don't really believe that. If you're missing something. Okay. If you're missing something. So doctors disagree. You'll absorb, you'll absorb what you need and you'll pee out the rest. Or, That's or true. four out of five doctors. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. yeah, but but in this case, and you're not going to be hurt by it. But in this case, they told us to eat the wrong things. They told our mothers, they told our teachers, they told our nurses, they told our doctors, this is healthy, and it was not healthy. And it, now we are stuck with people who are. When I tell them they can't have their big gulp every day because they have diabetes, you'd think I killed them because it's an addiction. I mean, I just told them their last friend was gone, right? Because that that big gulp was. How they got through the day. Well, when you're well, addicted sugar. to something, they're right, they're getting a fix of sugar and they're getting worsening diabetes. Right. So individuals have been ha have been manipulated by a government who says that they are taking care of us, who promised to take care of us, who we pay to take care of us. And they have violated they have violated our deal. Why should they lie to us just for, for business to make more money? That makes no sense to me, and it's unethical, and it has to be fixed by somebody. I don't know who's got the guts to do that, but somebody or within the, the government. Yeah. Well, we have the knowledge. They just have to read the real studies. Well, yeah, because when they did come up with the Harvard Food Plate, they and they it. were balancing the amount of fat versus carbohydrates, they still put their thumb on the scale They did in, no. in favor of carbs over fats right. when they knew better. But if you uh, don't eat fat, you're never full. Yeah. If you're never full, you eat all day. 
So that's a big problem yeah. <laughs> because it, it stimulates your hunger never to eat fat. So, so this is, this so is a big problem. So there are issues about ethics in scientific research, and there are concerns about government regulations and who benefits. If there's anybody listening who can help us, yeah. I mean, as a people, as a to learn to actually get a government that we can trust to tell us the truth and not tell us something that's just going to make us richer. Do you hear those helicopters? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want one good man or one good woman to be able to, you know, to c- carry the flag. Otherwise, we're gonna, we're going to be sicker and sicker because no one's telling us the truth. But some people are getting richer and richer. That's true. And that's what it's all about. So uh, the main thing we wanted to accomplish in this conversation today is to make you aware that that reality exists. I don't know that we have an answer except to say the more all of us are aware, the greater the chance is that there will be an answer because pressure that's put on these systems, whether it's government regulators or whether it's uh, food manufacturers or whether it's uh, food processors or whoever it may be, is put on them by the population to say, we're just not going to take it anymore. We need something better from you. We expect something better from you. Then that can make a difference. And so what we are saying to you is be informed, be active, be aware, make a difference. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.